20s and shit. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's true. I have a theory about Sid Barrett. I don't know if what? you guys want to hear it. Yeah, go ahead. I definitely want to hear it. Yeah. I might have told you this a while ago, but well, maybe but not. I've told it to a lot of people, so some people might be like, oh, he's a, on a Sid Barrett theory again. Like, <laughs> <laughs> listen to this. But, um, so, uh, man, maybe it's going to be too long to explain. No, go ahead. No, oh, please, basically, please. basically, okay, basically, whatever, he took a lot of acid and stuff, um, you know, and started exhibiting, like, signs of like schizophrenia and disassociation that's that's the story we all know right but what i've read in some biographies and some interviews with roger waters and david gilmore is that he was already doing things that were trying to get the band unpopular like he never wanted the band to he was like this art major person you know just started dabbling in music expressing himself in these quirky goofy ways and then he started saying Things like one thing Roger Waters said in an interview is that he came into the van before a show and was dressed uh, more flamboyantly. And he's like, "Oh, well, you dress like this. I've never seen you dress like this before." And he's like, "Oh, I'm, 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 hey, I'm gay now," you know. And he's like, okay. "You know, he didn't buy it, but he was like, oh, okay." <laughs> but I guess because in the 1960s and stuff, probably still a lot of homophobia and stuff. Maybe he was trying to like get that, use that as a ruse to like get the band less popular because mm. this is when they were starting to like come up, you know. Um, and then doing other stuff that I can't recall at the moment, but then um, he's the one that brings, and one thing I read, he's the one that brings David Gilmore into the band, actually, because he knew David Gilmore from somewhere else. And yeah, they brought were him to be, Exactly, and brought him into the band, or at least told Roger Waters about him, and Roger Waters probably brought him, but, but, but the connection was through Sid Barrett. Mm. And then that's when he starts like really doing like messed up things and like detuning his guitar and just like dropping it off stage so it's like almost like he was trying to like get fired maybe he didn't have the capacity in his head to like decide to do it maybe it was because of doing a lot of acid he was you know trying to find these weird ways to yeah, some when you could just maybe? quit huh yeah some regrets maybe so that's where i was gonna get to oh, okay is that um whatever they kick him out of the band he's still playing music he still comes out with albums yeah, after he, has his he own gets solo albums exactly mm, yeah. and he's even touring i went on this website that showed like all the pink floyd shows it had like catalogs since like the first pink floyd show ever and then it shows like it has like markers in it like this is when sid barrett starts you know exhibiting weird behavior and then this is when Sid Barrett leaves the band and then there's still like a bunch of shows that Sid Barrett's playing by himself after which mm. by the way the albums were also produced by David Gilmore Roger Waters and Rick Wright there you go so they were still working with him <laughs> yeah. yeah and then um whatever I guess they stop being in contact with him I guess they go into his own that's when he stopped playing music I guess became a hermit and then the next time they see Sid Barrett is right after the most iconic album that made him a lot of money. It's Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah. They're back in the studio ready to record another album, and then Sid Barrett comes into the studio, and he's, like, overweight. Oh, you is know? that that one picture? Yes. Where he's bald and Where overweight? Where he's bald and shaved his eyebrows yeah. and stuff. So I think this is probably in part of the psychedelic abuse he probably had, but I don't think it was necessarily him going schizophrenic. I think he just went, like had like this weird way of being like i don't want to be in music anymore and then regretted it after they blew up and then um yeah just went crazy and just like he comes in like where's my guitar part you know like he couldn't, yeah. couldn't like make it up in his head that you know and that's he why really quit this band so that you should have been in yeah yeah and then later on he lives a normal life like there's count uh, accounts of him in the 90s and stuff living a normal life painting um and having friends and having a life you know so he might have just went crazy like in in the way we don't think and also he didn't get diagnosed by a doctor well this was also the 60s uh, a, a lot of musicians got diagnosed before like uh, really yeah like peter green yeah peter jim green. gordon um, Brian Wilson, for sure. Brian Wilson, Rocky Erickson, you know, whether it was psychedelic abuse or, or, or uh, yeah, natural schizophrenia, like, he, yeah, they got diagnosed. There's like, That's in true. their biographies, it says they went to the doctor, doctor said they were schizophrenic. Right. I, I would like to point out that this actually lines up really well. Your theory very, 
winds up with um I remember this cuz uh, it was really funny cuz there was like this Pink Floyd documentary mm-hmm. and they all of the all of the members of Pink Floyd get asked about Sid Barrett. Oh, he was such a he was so great to work with. Oh, he was so great. He was a great friend. And then he gets the producer of, the, of Piper that gets done. He's like, I hated this dude. <laughs> <laughs> I could not stand. Like, he did everything possible so we wouldn't get a good recording. Wow. Wow. Like, he, he, he was doing it on purpose. Yeah, no, he would. So he would uh, mess up on, like, one part, right? And the producer's like, hey, man, why don't you play like this? And maybe, like, and then we can, like, overlay it or whatever. And then he goes in, back into the booth, plays something completely different. <laughs> like, almost to the point of, like, uh, well, he felt that it was, like, on purpose. Yeah. Where it's like, oh, let, let me give you this note. And then plays something so different that it's like the note doesn't even make sense like anymore. You're, like you're trolling them. I, yeah. Think, yeah. I think it was uh, it was definitely on purpose, but I think that was more not so they don't get a good... Re- I think that's just because he wanted to, like, constantly improvise. Yeah, there's also we- that, that story of, uh, of like, the last rehearsal that they had together. You know about that one? No, I haven't heard that. Uh, like, the last rehearsal that Pink Floyd had with, with Sid Barrett was just him, like, he comes in and he says he has a new song for the band, right? And um, so, like, all right, let's hear it. He, and this is, you know, around, like, Saucer Full of Secrets time, which if you, like, pay attention to Saucer Full, there's only one song on there that's written by Sid which yeah, is Jugman like blues. blues. So then, like, when he comes in and he goes, I have a new song that I want you guys to play, obviously the rest of the band is, like, all perked up, like, all years. And he starts playing it, right? Shows it to the band. They're like, all right, cool. They try to join him along, right? And he stops them in the middle. He's like, no, 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 that, that's not how it goes. It's, not, it's, like, it's like this. Then he shows it to them again. They're like, oh, okay, sure. They try again. He stops them again. He goes, no, 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 that, that's, that's not how it goes. And then he keeps doing that over and over, but it becomes very clear that every single time he's just changing it a little bit oh. each time to just kind of like mess with them. And he, he actually, he started it, he said the name of the song was Have You Got It Yet? And then at one point after <laughs> like messing with them for like 30 minutes, he looks at Roger and he goes, have you got it yet? And he's like fucking fuming. He puts his bass down and he goes, yeah. I've got it, Sid. And then he just walks out, and that was, like, the last rehearsal that they had with Sid. Wow. So he was just kind of a prankster, you know, a goofy little silly (laughs) guy. I I, I feel like it's equal parts, like, he's definitely messed up on drugs, but it's also equal parts of, like, this. I don't think the drugs helped, that's for sure. That's for sure. But it's, like, this Marty Dumb of, like, I represent real art. Yeah. Improvised all the time. It's almost like he was, like, the first punk, like... Yeah. yeah, punk, punk, like they're not supposed to play music. You're supposed to just feel. Um, <laughs> yeah. What you call it? Yeah. Do, do, are you familiar with the Velvet Underground? Yeah, I love was, the Velvet Underground. There was one dude that quit after their their first show, <laughs> in which they got paid the fifteen bucks all together for the entire band. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, we're already accepting money. I quit. No <laughs> way. <laughs> oh my. He's like, we sold out, dude. <laughs> 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 oh <my> $15. <laughs> <laughs> How much was $15 worth even back then? Oh, man. Probably like, like 50, 50 bucks. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. bucks. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that, that is good. That is good, bro. That's First hilarious, <laughs> That 